Hello, I'm Anthony Todd of Engineering Futures, and I'm going to show you today how to calculate one astronomical unit with a very, 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 very astronomical called the transit of Venus. So this is the transit of Venus. Now, the transit of Venus is just like a, a solar eclipse, except instead of the moon blocking out the sun, you now have a planet, okay, Venus. And it will actually look um, just like a dot crossing the sky. Now, what's interesting is when you view this, example, I'm going to try to take this real quick, if uh, people on the Earth would view this at the same time and they were to calculate how long it takes Venus to trace across the sun, so here's, I have a mock sun here, um, example, it would look something like this. Now the people on the bottom of the Earth, remember the Earth is rotating counterclockwise, when they view Venus, they'll actually see something like this, so example, if they were to look at Venus, I don't really draw this the best of scale, and they look something like such. And the people, okay, example, if they were to take an image of this, and you can find us on the internet, just Google transit of Venus, you get an image that looks something like this, a time lapse. You'll see Venus tracing across the sky. And what's cool is, they're to have a clock out, and they're to synchronize it with people on the opposite side of the Earth, they can figure out how long it takes Venus to cross. Now, what's interesting is, during that time, the Earth is not static. It's moving. It's, it's, it's rotating, or I should say, revolving around the Sun. And it, let's say we let it move a distance of the Earth. So, example, as this time turns, the Earth has moved uh, a very, very small amount in its orbit. And the people on top of the Earth, example, so these people are here where we call sunset, and then these, as the Earth rotates, they are now seeing Venus, and Venus has moved a tidbit in its orbit as well and we were to do the same thing, they would say, okay, I'll do it like that, sorry for all the moving, they would say that, oh wait, this is not right, the time you got is incorrect. Our Venus did something like this, T2. So the question is, what's happening here? I mean, what's going on? now? This was a big problem, and a lot of people didn't really understand this, but some uh, smart um, scientists realized that this is due to what we call parallax. Parallax is the exact same thing that can, that can happen when you put your thumb out in front of your view, and you close one eye, and you look at it, and then you open the other eye and close the one you were looking at it, the thumb will appear to shift back and forth. So what's cool is if we know this change in time, we can then find a very, very important unit in astronomy. That's called the astronomical unit. Okay, and that is 1 AU is the distance from Earth to the Sun. And this was very, very important. Astronomers had always approximated this, but never calculated it directly. So this was a major, major um, breakthrough in the actual scale of our solar system. Now how we calculate this is just like this. As planet Earth moves in its orbit, it traces out something called an arc length, S. And Venus does so as well. It has an arc length. Now, arc length in mathematics is a very simple equation. Your arc length is just your radius times theta, or your angle in degrees. Now, since both of these planets are actually moving, they're going to actually, this arc length is dependent upon their velocity, so their angular velocity, which we know is just radians over a time period, okay, and some time period delta t. So if we know how long it takes these objects to move, okay, we can then calculate this arc length. And if we know this arc length, then boom, we can then find r. And r in this case will be equal to one astronomical unit. So this was a huge breakthrough. And this is why a lot of people spend a lot of money traveling all over the world just to get some simple images of Venus tracing across the sun. So this was huge. And I'm going to show you that math real quick. If we know that omega, which is angular velocity, is just some radians over t, and we can figure this out, the Earth will trace out two pi radians in a year. Okay. And there is some time time for here. So omega is just how fast it does it. Now in this case, if we're solving for this, so rearranging this right here, this angle theta is equal to your angular velocity, which is what we just found, times some time. 
which is just going to be this delta t right here. Now remember, this t is not the time, that is the period. A lot of physics students and astronomy students get that mixed up. The big t is the period, that's how long it takes to take the around, around on. And this little t here is just how much time is being between point A and point B. So how from A to B, okay? So that's why I had to plug that in right there. So now with that being said, if we know these, we can plug these in. So our angle theta will just be equal to 2 pi time of the Earth times delta t, okay? And then s now we know what theta is. So now we can plug this back in and we can calculate the arc length that Earth travels during that time. So this is going to be 2 pi time of the Earth times delta t times this r. Remember, so this is theta. And R is our astronomical unit, so I'm going to let it be 1 AU. Now, we need to add something here, because since we're dealing with parallax, we're viewing the Earth from one side and then viewing it from the exact opposite side. So we have to add the diameter of the Earth to get us an accurate distance. Okay, So that's very interesting. So if we know the period of the Earth, this transit time, and, then, and the diameter of the Earth, we can then calculate what one astronomical unit is. Now. In order for us to check this, we have to do the exact same thing with Venus. Now, Venus is much, much further away, um, so its arc length will just be r times theta. So it's going to be the exact same thing, except it's going to be a little bit um, one minor difference. The r in this case is still going to be astronomical unit, and the omega is still going to be the same, except for time of Earth, we're going to have time of Venus, or the period of Venus. It'll be 2 pi time of Venus times our delta t, okay, so just like down here, exact same thing, our arc length is still one astronomical unit, except we're not going to add the diameter of Venus, and the reason being is Venus is so, so far away from Earth that that number is so minuscule that it just washes out, it's basically zero. So now what's cool is we have two equations, and we can now smush them together and make them check. This is where some nice spicy math comes in. So you have 2 pi time of Venus delta t, that's one astronomical unit, is equal to 2 pi time of Earth times its delta t times one astronomical unit plus dE. Okay, so doing a little math, I'm going to take this and move it over here. We now see there's a lot of things we can pull out. So we're going to pull these out. Okay, like such. And now we're starting to see the final equation start to come in. Right. So we want to solve for this astronomical unit right here. We can just simply divide everything. So one astronomical unit equal to diameter of the Earth divided by 2 by delta t and there we have it. This is a very, 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 very important equation. Okay, this is the equation we used to calculate what one astronomical unit was. Now, we can do this right here. Now, all we have to know is some simple numbers. Okay, the t period of Earth is easy. It's 365 and a quarter days. The period of Venus is 243 days. The diameter of Earth is 1.2, we'll call that 8 times 10 to the fourth kilometers. Okay, so we know the diameter of the Earth, we know these two periods, and boom, we can now, oh, and, oh, sorry, our delta T. Now, the last time this happened, um, the transit was, I think it was in 2012, the, a okay, now, with this equation in mind, and we have these variables, we have to convert everything to seconds. So the period of Earth 
And when you do the math, you get about 3.156 times 10 to the 7 seconds. That's how many seconds are in a year. And the period of Venus is about 1.941 times 10 to the 7 seconds in a year for Venus as well. So these are our orbital period times. All right. And we know the diameter of the Earth is just 1.28 times 10 to the fourth kilometers. We just plug everything into our equation and we can actually solve for one astronomical unit. So 1.28 times 10 to the fourth kilometers. 2 pi times 690 seconds. Now that is our delta T. That is 11.5 minutes. This gives you approximately 690 seconds. So this is our transit time from above. Okay. Notice this transit time will be different for different positions on Earth, but as long as you know um, those positions uh, and those times, then you should get the pretty much the exact same thing. So we know that. And we know the periods. So period of Venus is 1 10 to the 7th minus the period of Earth. 1 divided by the period of the Earth. All right, whenever you work all this out, one astronomical unit is equal to 1.28 times 10 to the 4th. And if you were to work everything out on the bottom, bottom you get a number 10 to the negative fifth. And solving for that, we get this number right here. 148,657,272 kilometers, which is approximately 1.5 times 10 to the eighth kilometers, which is the actual definition of one astronomical unit. So this is the same process we used um, a few hundred years ago to actually solve for one astronomical unit. And this was a huge, huge milestone in, in astronomy because it allowed us to start to scale the solar system and really found our place in uh, the universe. So thanks for watching.